Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Okay, folks, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and we're doing it old school. You know, occasionally, I get up a little too early, and I'm making a video, and I don't want to wake everybody in the house up. So this is one of those days. I might wake them up anyway, and if that happens, it happens, because it's spring break. Now, uh, XRP Las Vegas is coming fast now, folks. We're, well, let's look at where we are. We are 28 days, 17 hours left. And here's the new promo. Get ready, XRP community. We are now under 30 days from XRP Las Vegas 2024. Celebrating a new era in finance with the XRP community at the largest XRP conference in the world. Our amazing speaker lineup with Perry and Boring. Christopher Giancarlo, David Schwartz, Simon McLaughlin, Kevin Maloney, Andy Schechtman, Nancy Beaton. Well, just pause that because with this video, Brad Combs put out a, um, an agenda. So Friday, May 3rd, this is so, folks, this is like, whoa. Um, Friday, May 3rd, opening remarks, and then Fruition Productions, which is doing the XRP Unleashed documentary, they're going to put on, my understanding is like, they're going to, not just a trailer, but they're going to put on like the first, I don't know, I don't know how much of the documentary, but, but it's like a, a, a longer cut that you, that will not be seen anywhere, hasn't been seen and won't be seen anywhere until the documentary comes out. Then um, here at 1110, you've got Ripple and Uphold Partnership while labeling. So you'll have Simon McLaughlin, Nancy Beaton, and Will Petruski on, on stage. Then you've got lunch. Then you got uh, uh, Capitol Hill, Stop the Crypto Bam, Perry and Boring, Will Petruski. Then you got 115, Building a Multi-Chain World, Quincy Jones from the Talks XC, XDC, XRP2, Farron Pratt, Piercest, uh, Jeff from Moe, Moe Moe Finance, finance. <laughs> Rachel, it's early folks. 215, private equity and IPO. It's going to be Joe Endoso from Link2. Then you got Robin O'Connell from Uphold, Jason Cousins from Glint, I Trust Capital, Kevin Maloney. We'll, that'll be a great panel. Protecting the global reserve status of the U.S. dollar, Chris Giancarlo and Brad Combs. And then here on Saturday, uh, 9 o'clock, Caleb and Brown. Will, Will Petruski's from LinkedIn, by the way. Liquid Acre, Blockchain Laboratories, Wes Watkins, uh, Lloyd Trey Nelson, um, Crypto's new senatorial candidate, John Deaton, James Meta Lawman, Traditional Investing in iTrust Capital, Kevin Maloney, Lunch, then you've got Gold, CBDC, this is going to be an interesting one, Andy Sheckman, Lynette Zhang, Jason Cousins, Will Petruski. 1230 to 130 legal panel, state state of crypto, John Deaton, um, Ludlow Street Advisors, James Meta Lawman, Legal Briefs, Jeremy Hogan, Digital Chamber, Cody Carbone, Sologenic Uphold, Favio, Robin O'Connell, Senatorial Candidate Nevada, Hard Yaka, Greg Kidd, then current state of crypto in Capitol Hill, which is House of Representatives, Wiley Nichols, this is an actual congressman that's going to be on with Will Petruski. Um, David Schwartz, new features on ever-expanding XRPL, Rachel Wolfson, David Schwartz. Wow, folks, this is going to be one <laughs> unbelievable. You better go, look, the, everything's general admission is ticking away. I talked to Brad Combs yesterday, and he's about to hit numbers that, that he didn't, didn't even believe he could hit. So that means that he's in danger of having to close it down. So go get them. I've got links in the description. If you're in my DAIXRP.com group, there's a discount code at the very top. Hurry. I'm not going to play this video. I just wanted to show you this. Kathy Wood's bull case is Bitcoin will hit $1.5 million. 
that's not going to hurt anybody in the industry. And we heard from Rosalind Layton, um, SEC came to destroy crypto, not to regulate it. We haven't heard from Rosalind Layton in quite a while. She was a great help during ETHgate to help expose what was being found, and she's a thousand percent right. I'll correct her on something. The SEC came to destroy all crypto except for Bit the Bitcoin and Ethereum, which they thought they had a monopoly on because of what Bill Henry and Jay Clayton did. The XRP army set a nuke off in the middle of their plan. Okay, um, now first I got to show you this. Gold closes at record high for fifth straight day. Dollar dumps as bond bloodbath stalls. Okay. Then we've got this, and I'm going to have to break this up because, um, look, folks, we, we spent a lot of, we spent over three years exposing ETHgate with none of the mainstream media, nobody of any significance picking it up. And now James O'Keefe has picked it up. Yesterday, he had Stephen Nerioff on his program or did a, an X Spaces with him, and I was sitting there wait, I was list, waiting for it. And they said they were going to do it at 4 Eastern time, and it kept, I kept refreshing, and, and it wasn't happening. And finally, he posted this, um, that he was having trouble starting up in minutes. Uh, it's not letting me start the space. Odd screenshot below. Could not start, couldn't start scheduled space. Please try again. Almost as if somebody didn't want him to talk about this thing. Then he puts out, and I'm going to have to break this up because there's so much good stuff here. I want to play you a little bit of this first. During the, the X, um, he put this up, which he had put together a video based on um, the, that basically outlines what had happened to Stephen and Ethgate and all. And I think that what they did yesterday, there's going to be a continuation where they get more into Ethgate part, Ripple the um, Ethereum free pass and how that tied in to Stephen Nerioff's problems. Meet Stephen Nerioff. Stephen states he's one of the people who helped lay the groundwork for Ethereum. He's a savant with over 40 patents in the AI and crypto sectors. Ethereum is the world's second largest crypto product by market capitalization and was the first considered blockchain to support smart contract functionality. What are smart contracts? Think of them as smart code, logic that you can code into an application to do a certain thing. When Ethereum was founded about a decade ago, Stephen Nerioff was talking to one of the heads of the Ethereum Foundation and declined what would today be considered a few billion dollars in Ether, a grand total of one million Ether. This sum is calculated through contributor agreements, expense reimbursements, and other investments that Nerioff made at the time. Now, Stephen Nerioff states his motivation for helping this Ethereum project and not wanting to be paid was due to him believing in the larger vision of a decentralized network that had the ability to help change the world for the greater good. Nerioff also states that he wanted to eliminate any conflicts of interest to protect the project and the people involved. That's why he claimed he wasn't interested in the money. Now, Stephen Nerioff's cause has become something of an issue in the crypto community, so we decided to look into the documents back and forth between Nerioff and some of the people involved in the founding of Ethereum to evaluate. To me, there's a little bit of a, in, in, in the way they covered this, there's a little bit of a, when I think of Ethgate, that's, e, Stephen Nerioff's a separate, I mean, he's a part of it, but when I think of ETHgate, I think of the Ethereum free pass, the part where they, well, a combination. The Ethereum, the, well, the DAO, the Ethereum free pass, and then suing Ripple. I, I consider those three things as ETHgate. Um, and maybe stopping Stephen Nerioff was, was a, a portion of that, but I think it's almost like a separate story. But they've kind of, it, it's kind of hard to tell this story, but you, to me, the easiest way to tell this story would have been a timeline of, and, and I think that's why he broke it up. You start at the Ethereum ICO and how Stephen there, and that's kind of what they did. You start with the conversation about that and, and how Stephen Nerioff was involved in that. And then, um, and then you get to 
the place where Bill Hinman comes to the SEC, which is about the time the FBI comes after Stephen Neryoff. And then you, but as you're telling that story, the part they didn't really get into was, was the ripple, because I think it's all relevant. It's all the same in the same thing. And you can't, without getting into the ripple and the Bill Hinman and the Jay Clayton and then them leaving and dropping the lawsuit and then stepping back and understanding the significance of creating that Bitcoin Ethereum monopoly and shutting the regulatory capture door on everything else. You can't really get it until you tell that whole story in one thing. And I hope I think that's what the XRP Unleashed documentary. Now remember that the XRP Unleashed documentary is not just about Ethgate. That's just a section. It's like a six or seven part series. There's like one episode on Ethgate. That documentary is about XRP and the XRP Army, really, about all of that. Now, I'm probably I'm not going to play this whole thing but what I am going to do is um, I want to show you this and then in the in my in DAI XRP I'm going to show you some of the, the best clips uh, from and I'm also there was one Australian guy I'm going to give him I think he asked me for a title I think I saw a message from the guy but I wanted to show you this first and I do not remember this character they brought this guy up in the conversation yesterday and I don't remember this guy's name in, involved with Ethereum from uh, when we were uncovering Ethgate. But he tweeted this out. He says, check out this DM I got from James O'Keefe employee. It's a classic, when did you stop beating your wife question. It appears you're, they're planning some bogus Ethereum hit piece. This is what he says the O'Keefe's people sent to him. In your opinion, is ETH controlled by a select few? If yes, who is in control? Does the CCP play a role in it? If so, why, how? Now, Evan Van Ness is not the guy that I would speak to on that particular topic. The guy I would talk to, and I can't remember his name right now, but I put out a video not too long ago, and it was a guy that was at the Ethereum Foundation. I will find it, and I'm sure you listening will find it for me. <laughs> um, but it was a guy from the Ethereum Foundation who uh, who quit, or he either worked there or at Consensus, and he said, yeah, what, well, I, at some point I realized I was just pumping Joe Lubin's bags, is what he said. But this guy is trying to act like this is Ripple's PR team. Unfortunately for Eric Van Ness, Ethgate was born of the XRP Army. There were no, Ripple, uh, to my knowledge, has never even said Ethgate. Ripple didn't have anything to do with with all of that, and and Stephen Neryoff was born out of it, out of the XRP Army uncovering Ethgate. Ripple's Democrat donors is not relevant. It's it's a major distraction. But as usual, Evan Van Ness, just like none of the Ethereum people, none of them have ever answered for it, the timeline, any of the stuff. None of the people involved in Ethgate, none of them have answered anything. They've never had a microphone stuck in their face and have asked a real question about this thing, which tells you all you need to know. Well, we're going to go into DAIXRP.com, and I'm going to show you some of the clips from that X Spaces. And it, because remember, this is when I got, I got kicked off of, I got kicked off of X the second Stephen Neryoff showed up, and I started showing videos on, or started talking about this very topic about him being thrown in a van and all that. So we're only going to talk about that part in DAIXRP.com. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and away we go.